Now we know what a prepaid revenue is. Let's look at how we treat it. So let's pretend we're called a business called Fancy Furniture and we make handmade furniture for clients. So what happens is customers give us their money up front. Um, so the prepaid for a, a table, for example, and then we'll go away and make it. And then eventually, once we've made it, we'll give it to the customer. So there's going to be a bit of time there where we've got the customer's money, but we haven't given them a table. So, for example, let's say on the 31st of May, a customer has ordered three tables. Each table has a selling price of $100 plus GST, and the cost price of each table will be $40 plus GST. So, on the 31st of May, the customer is going to prepay for three tables. So, they're going to give us $300 plus $30 GST. So we haven't earned that money at all yet. So at this point, the $300 is going to be either a revenue or a liability. So we've got some cash. So we, either way, we treat it as a debit to the cash account. We've collected some GST. So either way, that's going to be a credit to GST. And then we've got a choice. We can either call it a revenue over here. We've earned some sales. Or we can call it a prepaid revenue liability over here on the right. So the correct method is actually the one on the right, where you're going to call that $300 prepaid revenue. And most importantly, that's a liability. It's not actually a revenue yet because we haven't earned it. And why is it a liability? Well, it's because we've got the $300, but we haven't yet earned it. And therefore, if we went through the three parts of a liability, it meets our definition. There's going to be a pro present obligation, in this case, to provide three tables. There's a past event, which was the $300 that the customer prepaid us. And then there'll be, in the future, an outflow of economic benefits, which will be all the materials and the labour, the wood and so on, in order to make the tables. So when we get this $300 plus GST, we're going to treat it as a liability. And whenever we get money, that's going to go in our cash receipts journal. So we'll record the date, 31st of May. Details, instead of writing sales, we're going to write prepaid revenue because it's not a sale. We've got a receipt number. Under the bank column, we've received $330. Then what we'll do is we'll put the $300 that we've received in prepaid revenue. That'll go into sundries. And then we've got our $30 GST. So we're going to call this the liability approach to prepaid revenue. And what that means is we left the sales column blank. We didn't put the $300 received in the sales column. We put it in sundries. And the reason is it's not a sale yet because we haven't earned it. So we want to keep that sales column blank. And instead, we'll put it in sundries. And likewise, over here, we didn't call this sales. We called this prepaid revenue. So when we're posting that, we post our $330 from the bank column with increased cash, so that would be a debit. Got $300 in the sundries column, which was for prepaid revenue. We call that a liability, so liabilities go up on the credit side. And then we've got our $30 GST, which is going to increase our GST liability, so that would be a credit. So we've got one debit matching up with two credits there.